Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city officially launched its new website, kcmo.gov, this past week. kcmo.gov replaces kcmo.org and it is search-based. It features a custom Google search front and center to help visitors find everything they need immediately. You just Google it and it brings up search results from our website only. KCMO.gov also works across most platforms, meaning you can view it on your desktop, phone, or tablet. Check it out at KCMO.gov. Parking just got a lot easier in Kansas City. The city partnered with Park Mobile USA to create a phone app that allows users to pay for parking with their cell phone. The app, called Park Mobile, may be used on any of the city's 1,500 parking meters, and it's accessible on iPhone, Android, Windows, and BlackBerry smartphones. To learn more, visit parkmobile.com. The city is accepting applications for its KC Federal Home Loan Bank Home Repair Program. This program provides essential home repairs, such as roof replacement or electrical work, to qualified residents who live in seven neighborhoods that have some of the most urgent housing repair needs in Kansas City. Eligible neighborhoods include Wendell Phillips, Washington Wheatley, East 23rd Street Pack, Santa Fe, Ruskin, Vineyard, and the Middle Blue River Sustainability Area. For more information or to download an application, visit kcmo.gov and search Federal Home Loan Bank. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Spring is almost here and your parks and rec facilities have many activities planned to help welcome the season. For example, Starlight Theater is hosting a spring break theater camp for kids ages 6 to 14 the weeks of March 10th to 14th and March 17th to 21st. Campers will spend a week with theater professionals exploring acting, singing, and dance skills while rehearsing for a production they will perform for family and friends at the end of the week. Campers will contribute to the creation of the set, props, and costuming for the performance. They will also enjoy classic camp games and craft activities. No experience necessary. Learn more and access registration forms at kcstarlight.com. Zoological District Free Day is Tuesday, March 18th. This means that residents of Jackson and Clay Counties in Missouri will receive free zoo admission on March 18th as a thank you for their support of the zoo through the Zoological District. Visitors should be sure to bring their ID or a utility bill to show proof of residency. Learn more at the zoo's new website at kansascityzoo.org. Kick off springtime home and garden fun at the Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show from March 28th through the 30th at Bartle Hall. This Kansas City tradition showcases the latest ideas, opportunities, and choices for homeowners to get a jump on spring home and garden projects. Parks and Rec is sponsoring the Flower Lawn and Garden Show, where we'll also provide stage entertainment, children's activities, and hand out information about our programs and the city's KC Green initiative. To learn more, visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800. Now, through March 31st, the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center will feature the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom exhibit. This powerful photographic exhibition captures the largest demonstration in our nation's capital and civil rights history. The Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Admission is free. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The TV show CSI may have a lot of fancy gadgets to solve crimes, but our KCPD Crime Lab has a few smart tricks of its own when it comes to fighting crime. Enough to make the TV show envious. We have volunteers. Director Linda Netzel explains. 
we currently have six volunteers working and then in the summer we add interns to that and typically it will double to about 12 volunteers and interns. Volunteers help with administrative work on the, the easier side of the volunteering all the way up to helping us do some management with our evidence and our cases. People volunteer for a lot of different reasons. Some of the reasons are they'd like to have something to do, they're retired, they have some skills, something they can offer to us, and then the other part of it is individuals volunteer because they want to eventually work in a crime lab or in law enforcement in general, maybe not a crime lab. It's very important for us to have the volunteers because of the amount of time that they take off of the caseworking staff. They help with a lot of simple things that the caseworking staff would normally do. So it helps us in our managing cases and reducing backlogs. We spoke with a couple of volunteers, one at the beginning of a career and one sort of wrapping up a career. It's extremely rewarding to be a part of um, what happens here and I can tell that the work that goes on at the crime lab has a significant impact on investigations and being part of that is a privilege. I wanted to do something that had a concrete impact on crime in Kansas City. I work for the latent fingerprint section and I do pretty much whatever administrative duties they need me to do. A lot of filing. Although I was ready to retire, I still enjoy law enforcement. I wanted to contribute in some way. And so I felt like the, by volunteering, I could do those things that I enjoyed, but still have the time to do the things that I want to do in my own personal life. I think that volunteering uh, and the use of volunteers is a wonderful resource for the department because we have a lot of detectives, uh, supervisors, sergeants, uh, a lot of personnel that we receive a lot of training through the years and it's really there's a wealth of ability and information and it's a huge resource that Director Netzel has, has wisely in my view chosen to, to uh, tap into. Again, Director Netzel. There are always opportunities for people to volunteer, uh, particularly kids that are in college that are considering a career in forensic science. They can volunteer with us during the school year and then intern with us in the summer. Uh, that helps them see if this is really the job they want to do or the career they want to pursue. And it helps us by having a potential long-term interview process with this person. How do they fit in? And it certainly gives them an advantage once openings at the lab do happen in uh, being selected for that position. If you have a skill set that would be an asset to our lab, contact the Kansas City, Missouri Regional Crime Lab. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Believe it or not, it's almost springtime and severe weather is going to be on the way. So March 3rd through 7th is Missouri Severe Weather Awareness Week. During this week, the city's Office of Emergency Management encourages residents to review what to do and where to go in the event of severe weather. The annual Missouri Severe Weather Drill will be held on Tuesday, March 4th around 1.30 p.m. During the drill, the Emergency Operations Center will sound tornado sirens. Learn more about severe weather preparedness information at sema.dps.mo.gov slash events. The city will host its final of three public budget hearings on Saturday, March 1st from 10 a.m. to noon at the KCPD South Patrol Division Auditorium. The hearings encourage the public to provide input on the proposed fiscal year 2014 to 15 budget. Individuals who still want to contribute to the budget conversation may visit kcmomentum.org. This is the city's virtual town hall website. KC Momentum is a convenient way to hear from residents who have good ideas but who may not have been able to attend the traditional in-person public budget hearings. The proposed budget is available for the public's review on the city's open data catalog at data.kcmo.org. The city's airport terminal advisory group is also hosting a series of public hearings to hear input on potential changes to Kansas City International Airport's terminal configuration. The remaining meetings will take place on Monday, March 10th at the Southeast Community Center and on Thursday, March 20th at Johnson County Community College's Polsky Theater. All meetings will take place from 6 to 7.30 p.m. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov weeklyreport weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.